excuse me, clear my throat there before I actually start talking. My friends, what's going on? This is Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. Uh, and today, this morning, or wherever you're at in the world, uh, we have a young gentleman uh, who is coming to us, and by young I mean 19, coming to us from Houston, or at least that's where he's from. Let's see if he's still living there. Sully Wadsworth. What's going on, my brother? Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're so welcome, man. Are Are you still uh, living in Houston, Texas? Uh, I'm actually living in Nashville, Tennessee right now. Okay. Okay. I love Nashville, man. Mm -hmm. I love Nashville. Actually, Houston is a place that I haven't been. Uh, Nashville is a place that I love. So awesome, brother. Well, uh, are you out there in college or what are you doing in Nashville? No, I came out here in the beginning of the year to do, um, we had a branch in Houston and a branch in Nashville to do roofing sales. Okay. And, um, my boss said like, he wants, he wants me to come live out here. And, um, I've just been living here ever since. I don't work for them anymore. I'm just doing mm. fully, um, digital marketing, but nice. Yeah, I just decided to stay. I, li I like it too. <laughs> I like yeah, it. yeah. Awesome, bro. Well, the good thing about having an online business is you can live wherever you want, right? Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, if I was a young man like yourself, which I was one day and uh, at one, in, in, one back in the day when I was 19, you know, I sound like a grandpa sometimes <laughs> these days. No offense to the many, many grandpas who are a part of our uh, community here, but um, yeah, I would have loved to have kind of traveled around and lived in some different places. Uh, now, I probably would have been slumming it. Now, uh, thankfully, my wife books us in really nice hotels, and I actually get to sleep in a bed uh, in, in probably not some cot or somebody's couch at an Airbnb like I probably even would do to this day if I planned my own travel because I'm the worst of that kind of stuff. But live it up, brother. Live it up while you're young, man. So what led you to Legendary? Um, so... I quit my roofing job in the end of June and um, I didn't really have anything going on. I was, I took this course online to be uh, an insurance adjuster um, mm -hmm. just because it was something easy. My mom's doing it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we work with adjusters a lot as a roofer, um, yeah. filing claims and stuff with the insurance. And um, it was just something easy and just something to make money. To get mm -hmm. by um because i mean i'm living out here with my 19 year old girlfriend just us too so we're we're being adults for the first time and trying to figure out everything and sure. and uh, can't can't live with my boss forever especially if i don't work there so i uh didn't really have much going on and i was taking that course to be an adjuster and then um i was on TikTok and i found um do you, do you remember eric forner um the name sounds familiar it, um so i saw him on tiktok i think he was on like a few weeks ago um okay and i just uh i didn't even know what affiliate marketing was i knew about digital marketing but i mean just basic level stuff and mm -hmm. um i was just going through his feed because i it was on my for you page and i was like okay what is this and then it was really mm -hmm. interesting and and he goes live every night at seven so i was like okay so i joined the lives and I was like, oh, it's question time. And I was just, you know, shooting like questions at him just left and right. And uh, I was like, I mean, honestly, it got to the point where I was asking so much. I was like, I don't even care if I'm being annoying right now. I'm just going to keep getting my, you know, the answers that I need. And uh, he just kept, he was being so helpful and kept answering. And I was like, dude, how do I do this? Like, this sounds awesome. And uh, sure enough, the link was in his bio. And that was like six weeks ago. And I, and I clicked on it and. So far, it's changing my life. <laughs> so you went through the went through the fifteen day challenge, and and uh, that was revealing and and positive for you. Oh yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah, what was some of your big aha moments? I mean, as you come from roofing sales and then even insurance adjustment. I mean, this is your first time doing any sort of affiliate marketing or digital marketing, right? Six weeks ago. I mean, you're super fresh, right? Yeah. And so what? Know. What? Uh, yeah, I mean, what? What? you know, is this something that you're thinking, Hey, you know, I can do this to make some money for sort of like you were thinking of the insurance adjusting stuff, or are you seeing bigger, greener pastures out in the future of, of how you can turn this into, you know, a, a small empire for yourself? 
Oh, definitely that second one. I definitely like the future's too bright. It's it's blinding me. Um, whenever I started the 15 day challenge and I hopped on the those calls with the business advisor, I was like, dude, like all my eggs are in this basket right now. I don't even care. I'm going to succeed no matter what. And I was like, I mean, I have I had a goal even in the beginning when I had that like unrealistic optimism. I was like, I want to be making ten thousand dollars a month by next year. Like. I'm just going to do whatever I can because, I mean, I have all day to do this and, and to learn and to apply. And that's just what I've been doing for the past six weeks straight. Um, so, yeah, I definitely want to turn it into like a small empire. Yeah. So, and you've already had, you told us in your application, your first $100 day and your first $1,000 day. You've gained nearly 20,000 TikTok followers over a span of three weeks. So, I mean, you've had some pretty big wins right out of the gate that I I mean, for me in my first six weeks back when I was, you know, walking both ways in my house uphill in the snow to the computer. Uh, there I go with my grandpa stuff again. But, uh, you know, I was I was running around in my underwear in the house, man, when I just started generating a few leads. So, I mean, to have your first hundred dollar day, your first thousand dollar day within the first six weeks and maybe you even had it sooner than that. I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter. First, that's a big deal. How, what, what was the reaction like? How did you react and, you know, walk us through that give, as if we were a fly on the wall for that? It was great. And honestly, I, I only started learning six weeks ago. I actually started promoting exactly a month ago on this day, uh, August 9th. So now it's September 9th. And whenever I got that, that, um, that high ticket, I was like, this is, this is powerful stuff. I, if I can just replicate this and, and keep doing it and keep providing you know, valuable content, mm -hmm. I, can, I can help change my life and change other people's lives. And that's, that's what I love about it. So your, your girlfriend, being such a young man, she's a big part of your why. And uh, she, you said that she, she's in your, in your, uh, in your you know, questionnaire, you said that she sacrificed quite a bit for you. Um, what was the celebration or reaction from her when she saw that this is real and, and saw you make some money? And, and, and you know, what was her reaction like? She was like, let's go out to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, calm down. Uh, we're still, we're still, you know, living frugally, trying to figure this out. Um, calm down, baby girl. Let's still ramen noodles tonight. Okay. We ain't balling yet. We, we ain't even balling on a budget yet. We still getting started here. We still ramen status. We'll get next week. If I hit another thousand dollar day, we'll get some fast food <laughs> the week after that. Okay. I'll take you to Chipotle. Just chill. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My, my man. Wow. So man, you're, she's like, let's go out. You're really in that fresh stage to where even going out to eat in your life is a big deal. Right, bro. Oh yeah. Dude. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to save every penny and she's the complete opposite of me, but I guess that's why it works out. Um, yeah. She always wants to go out. And I'm just like, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. <laughs> Maybe once wow, I'm like, well. we can go to McDonald's or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, bro. That's, you really taking me, I mean, I was, I was probably more like your girlfriend in terms of being just, you know, you, you know, um, I, I, yeah, like, like less frugal, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, man, like I'm, I'm thinking, but I used to eat these and my, my wife, my then girlfriend used, used to hate it, but I used to eat these dinty more beef stews, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard that, but they're, it's literally like kind of a, a step up from dog food, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like this beef stew from dinty more, man. And, and it's got more salt in it. I mean, than then you can shake a stick at uh and i used to love it but anyways it was so cheap it was like you know 75 cents or a dollar a thing and it'd fill you up you know what i mean and i used to eat those things all the time kind of kind of took me back there um nice so you've got twenty thousand followers on tiktok that's where things really start is really kind of choosing a business model understanding how that business model works getting your mechanical pieces set up your bridge page funnel etc and then kind of choosing a traffic strategy and, and you jumped back over on TikTok 
and you've been able to build up 20,000 followers and I would assume pump some pretty decent traffic into your funnels. What's been your, what's been your top one or two things that you, you feel are, um, you know, credited for the success there on TikTok? Um, definitely consistency. And then second would be, um, I mean, I got, I got a lot of help from Eric Forner. He's like my, I consider him my, one of my personal mentors. Um, just giving me advice on TikTok and in, in affiliate marketing. I America. see Eric, by the way, I see Eric and I, and I remember Eric. Yeah. I remember Eric. He, he's badass. He's a badass. There he is. Yeah. I, awesome. I, I owe him a lot of the credit. Um, he's helped me out ever since I started. Uh, he, he's just responded. I asked him questions, even in private messages. I still asked him like a ton of questions and, uh, now there's a little bit of a, a friendship there and um and yeah nice. because of his help is the reason why my tiktok blew up so fast nice nice well man you are you are pointing shout out to eric big shout out uh i totally remember his his episode it was awesome and uh and it was fun he it was fun he's a fun dude you know that's what up eric that's a um Man, that's such a, a huge benefit to to getting connected in this community in particular is the connections that you make and 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 of course just in this industry as well. I mean, the the connections that you make, the people who are literally just sitting in their living rooms or home office or wherever they're at, you know. I mean, when I started out, I, I literally set my desk up right in my my living room. So um, you know, and and nobody in my life understood what the hell I was doing. And quite frankly, they were pretty cynical and critical of it. You know, they thought I was a, a, a schemer, you know what I mean? And, and in some respects I was, you know, I was trying to get the hell out of the matrix. You know, I was trying to not go and work for minimum wage. Like many of my friends were that thought a good day's hard day's work for an honest day's pay. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is the path to being poor for the rest of my life. Um, so, you know, uh, how have you react? I mean, are you, do you, do you, have you made friends your own age in, in Nashville do you, or are you, and how do you, how do you balance between your goals and dreams, which may be much different from other kids, your age, other young men, your age, how are you, you understand the question, how are you balancing that? And, and, and how are you using connections like Eric to, to, help support the dreams and give you that friendship that you may not be getting from other friends and family who don't understand what you're doing, you know? Um, so I've definitely been reaching out to a lot of people on the internet, on TikTok, on Facebook and stuff. Um, whenever I first got here to Nashville, cause all my friends and family are from Houston and Dallas area. So, um, when I first came here, all I was doing was talking to homeowners cause I would go door to door you know, trying to, you know, see, hey, if your roof's messed up, we can help you out. Um, so I, I really was only surrounded by people who are much older than me. Um, and I didn't really, I didn't really have those opportunities to find like people my age in, in Nashville so far. I've only been here for about six months or so. Um, but I still have, you know, obviously because of technology, I can FaceTime my brother, my best friend back at home, my family. Have you um, shared with them that you're like, what is your mom who you were both doing insurance adjusting? How, what does she think about what you're doing as a young man? Does she understand it and your other friends that are close and, and what are you telling them or are you telling them anything? Oh yeah. They all know. Um, my mom, um, she loves it. She thinks it's awesome. But of course, like she was expecting me to get an and get an adjuster job. Uh, cause I just taken that online course and I finished it. And I, I literally, as soon as I finished that, I found affiliate marketing and then I hopped onto something new and she was like, Oh my God, you know, is this going to work out? And I just, <laughs> I try to explain things to her. Um, but she's always trusted me. She's always trusted my, my siblings as well. Uh, mm -hmm. whatever we want to do. Cause she knows we're not bums. And, um, um, she's just like, you know what, you know, as a parent, sometimes like, it's easy to judge quickly, but I trust yeah. you. And I, and, you know, she's like, you know, a mom just doesn't want to worry. And I a hundred percent understand that. I, I have an older mentor. He's probably in his like mid thirties. He tells me the same thing too. Um, don't make your parents worry. And then when it comes to my friends and stuff, they all know they're all on board. I try to like, 
I tried to create like a uh, a friend group of people who are like minded and like want we all want to grow together and we don't want to be lazy and uh, they're all doing their own things too and they think it's awesome. Even one of my buddies uh, hopped onto it and he actually um, he's doing really good with it too. I'm helping him every day. Nice, nice. I was gonna share something with you about about moms. You know, my uh, my mom. Um, when I when I very first got started, um, she was somebody who was my biggest supporter, and um, you know, she was also the person that I went to in the various business ventures that I did at the beginning, um, that didn't work out. You know, I tried, uh, I tried, you know, network marketing, um, and you know, that didn't work out great for me. Um, you know, and, and I tried a couple of other things and, uh, you know, I've had a couple of rules speaking of going out to eat over the years. I've tried to never let her pay for anything. Uh, when we, for example, go out to dinner, um, back in 2012, I think she had somebody run up in her, uh, driveway and hit her car and she needed a new car. So I was able to get her a Honda pilot back then. And then just yesterday I took her over to the BMW dealership and, um, and I bought her a brand new X3. This literally just happened yesterday. Nice. Um, you know, so she was, she was super happy. Um, and I, I was thinking, and I want to, I want to share it with everybody in this community because I think that if you have somebody that, you know, if you have somebody that, you that you love um you should you know work until you can do something nice for them you know what i mean you should work until you can uh until you can you know uh until you can buy them a car until you can buy them a house until you can you know take them out for dinner uh all the time and 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 pay for their dinners you know i and i can remember uh, a, a couple of months ago, I don't remember who it was, but the story stuck with me. Um, the story stuck with me that it was such a big accomplishment for this guy to be able to take his parents out for dinner, you know, and we were just talking about going out for dinner, you know, and it was such a big, a big accomplishment for this guy to take his, um, to take his, uh, his, his parents out for dinner and pay for it. You know, and I just thought, man, you know, that's that's a really that's a really simple and a and a cool and powerful accomplishment, you know. Uh, and I think for a lot of those in our in our um, in our in our family and in, in our friend circle who may be a little bit unsure or worry about us, like your mom, you just mentioned that your mom was uh, like, okay, but and you're going to get this insurance adjuster job, right? You know, because she she trusts you. She also worries about you because she's your mom, and moms just naturally worry about their their sons. But um, you know, when you begin to be able to do things like take her out for dinner, or do so, you know, get her a nice gift for Christmas, or in the case of my case, I've been I've been lucky enough uh, because of my consistency and in, and in, in work in this industry to be able to buy my car, my mom, not one, but now two cars, you know, and lots of dinners and, and lots of vacations and lots of gifts over many Christmases. Uh, and that is the best feeling, Sully. It's the best feeling because it's much more fulfilling and rewarding than buying yourself something. Uh, because that always wears off. You know, you can buy yourself a new watch. I got lots of watches. You can buy yourself even a new car. I drive a nice car. I got some nice watches and stuff. And those are kind of, you know, some of the nicer things that I have and, and a decent home and all this. I don't like to talk about what I got that much because it doesn't, doesn't really matter. It, what matters is what have I been able to do for other people? And ultimately that's what has been the most fulfilling as well to know that I've been able to get my dad a, a nice truck for him to drive in and a nice house for him to live in 
and my mom, you know, not have to worry about uh, needing a new car and spending what's she going to get. And, and now she can take her car and she can bless somebody else in our family, her existing car. And, and she's actually coming over here in about 15 minutes. And we're going to talk about what she's going to do with that to, to pass that over and on to somebody else in our family and bless them. And, you know, that I think are some of the bigger gifts that we get from this business and from this work we put in. And I know that's in your future, brother. And I, I'm really excited for, for you to share, for you to have that experience, for you to give your mom and your girlfriend that experience too, right, um, in the future. Is that something that, that you've thought about and, and you dream about? Is that something that you can see in your future and excite you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely past two years as we've been trying to like grow and just learn uh, outside of high school or just you know giving people always say that's like one of the most important things when you're growing in life and when you're like gaining wealth giving back is definitely huge and i mean i, I can't sit here forever telling you all the things my mom has done for me as every mom does right um, right yeah definitely want to give back and help them out too yeah yeah no i i can totally relate to that and and sometimes over the years and even now today my mom you know gets on my nerves and frustrates me and and i think that's that's just that happens with any mom and son um any son who's lucky enough to still have his mom in his life you know yeah. because as as we get older sometimes things happen and not everybody's that that lucky and that blessed but um yeah to have anybody worry about you man is is a blessing when somebody's worried about you when somebody's thinking about you you know it's annoying when we're young uh because we want to get people off our back but but as we get older we realize these people that have been praying for us that have been worrying about us that have been lifting us up and holding us up and supporting us our whole lives when i when I grew up in 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 the fog settled a little bit in my head and I realized holy shit you know all this stuff and all these sacrifices these people have made it made me want to work that much harder to be able to 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 make things a little bit more enjoyable a little bit easier for them not I'm not even talking about my children dude I'm just talking about all these other people who have sacrificed because when you become a father you have a choice right when you become a mother you have a choice and those of us who have mothers and fathers uh, who sat, who made sacrifices for us. Um, and, you know, there's another way to honor our parents, you know, even if they're not here, ladies and gentlemen. And that's to follow through and take care of yourself and succeed because that's what they would want for you. And you know that. So as I'm talking about our abilities for those of us who still have our parents and loved ones in our life, and you may be thinking, well, mine's gone. No, 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 no. Don't get into that bullshit soundtrack that you might tell yourself you can honor them you can honor them by taking care of yourself and succeeding in ways that they whatever your spiritual belief is maybe you know that they're looking down on you but in a way that they would think and and, and be happy and proud and they could truly rest in peace knowing that you are taking care of yourself and succeeding and living a good life. And I think that's another man. It's look, as you can see, Sully, I'm the kind of dude that I'm going to grab inspiration and motivation. However I can, because I know that the soundtrack that plays in my head is my choice. If I want to play some bullshit, dis disempowering soundtrack, that's like, you know, oh, well, I don't have anybody to really take, you know, bless and nobody wants to bless me. And I look, I can always find the glass that's half empty, yeah. but it's my job, especially as the CEO of my life and my business to look around and find inspiring soundtracks to play in my head that will get me motivated, that will will keep me pushing forward. And, and, and is that something that has come to you, you know? that you've been sort of, I guess you would say, enlightened by with this industry and maybe some of the content here at Legendary about the mindset stuff? Was that something that you were already on the path forward? How has your mindset shifted in the last six weeks? Yeah, um, I really, when I was going through the 15-day challenge, I really liked how you added mindset to me because you definitely need that. And um, honestly, I think most people probably won't succeed as as much as they want to if they don't continually fight for that mindset every day because then it's, it's really easy to get negative 
and down every day. Like I could even complain right now, but I mean, there's always, you can all turn it a different way. There's always two sides to look at it. And uh, just, just it's that consistency. And you also have to consistently fight for that mindset every day. Yeah. Um, and, and the people that I've met online and everything, Eric and, and some of the other people, like they're just really good people who want to help. And that's helped a lot with my mindset as well. Yeah, support is absolutely help, helps, um, and you know, positive external reinforcement, and then building a habit takes some time. You know, my my, uh, we were, I was just talking uh, with my nanny this morning about my son, and we were talking about how he uh, is is learning um, is learning uh, certain things. You know, to to hold a spoon and and you know, simple stuff, you know, uh, he, he actually let her read a book to him yesterday for, for the first time all the way through. And, uh, instead of, and he actually was turning the pages and stuff. And, uh, thankfully she's wonderful and we love our kids and we love to, um, you know, watch their development and kind of relive almost our childhoods back through them again. And, and the children are just so awe inspiring, but it's, it's powerful to watch them to develop their habits and, and, and improve things over a period of about, you know, 15 or 30 days. Uh, they'll get something. You know, it took him about 15 to 30 days when he started scooting around before he was a little motor crawling all over the damn floor. We couldn't even catch him, you know, and, and now he's starting to kind of pull himself up and walk. And he's not walked, but I guarantee you within 30 days he will. He'll get it, Right. Because that's how we humans work, uh, even into our later decades in our life. It takes us 15 to 30 days to kind of really get the hang of something and, the, and build a habit, as they call. And, uh, and yeah, I think we quit right before the miracle happens a lot of times uh, when we're learning new things or doing new things. Um, it's going to be uncomfortable to get in front of the camera at first. But 15 or 30 days down the road... It's going to be easy to pick up that phone and and record a new piece of content. You know, uh, you'll be able to tell other people, oh, it was just like that for me. Keep going. Trust me. In 15 days, it'll be like uh, it'll be like second nature to you. So um, what would you say to somebody based on your experience, for example, going through the 15 day challenge who might be listening right now? And, and who's considering getting started in, in going on this journey based on what you experienced so far? Um, definitely do all the assignments. Um, definitely get in touch with your business advisor. Mine, I mean, I treated him just like I did Eric. I just asked him questions whenever. <laughs> I mean, even to the point where, like, you know, if it bothered him, I, I didn't care because um, I'm very much, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people like this, you know, we want to ask questions and I like, I like what a uh, Simon Sinek says. He says, uh, you know, don't be afraid to be the idiot in the room. And if I don't know something, I'm, I'm fine with, you know, uh, trying to ask questions, even if I don't look that smart, because maybe someone else had that question or, you know, I, I'm, I want to find the answer either way. So definitely take advantage of that business advisor. He'll answer a lot of questions for you. And then, uh, just take notes, really make sure to pay attention to all the videos and treat each day. Like, as with you know with as much care as you can and really just absorb all of it do the assignments <laughs> based on what you've experienced so far do you think this deserves legitimate what we're doing here by teaching online marketing versus going to college which is you know has systematic buy in that that's a great thing to do with for your future and it is for some people who want to become doctors and lawyers trust me i want somebody who's going to operate on my heart to have lots of schooling but do you think that the education that for example a company like legendary has created for people to learn digital marketing is a legitimate path for people young and old to learn a new skill set and even create a new career path yeah yeah i mean it's really it's kind of like in a sense, you're going back to school. Like that's what my business advisor told me. And that's hundred percent right. And like, I, I was in school like two years ago and um, it, it, it feels almost exactly like college, but it's better because it's something that I know is gonna directly lead me somewhere. Um, and it's the reason I'm here today because of that 15 day challenge. And, and for, I mean, 
for the for the value that you get out of it, it's it's huge. Like it's it's much more than anyone could ask for, to be honest. And much different than dropping or committing to forty thousand dollars for the next four years when you're not even yet clear about what you want to do when you grow up. Because I'm still not even clear about that either. You know, <laughs> uh, I'm just having fun still oh, for ten years in this industry and. Um, I guess it's a career at this point, you know, I've certainly turned it into one, but, um, but is there really ever such a thing as committing to something for the rest of your life? I mean, even my marriage, my, my wife and I say, sometimes we say, well, God damn it, we're just going to get through this week, you know, and we'll, we'll let ne next week. I mean, we, now we're settled into our marriage, but I'll tell you for about 10 years in the first 10 years, we were like holding on baby. You know what I mean? It was a rocky ride, you know? So it's like, you think about something that's so much less important, which is a job or, you know, a career path. That's less important than your, your most important relationship. It's like making that decision to commit to a certain job or certain industry when you're 18 or 19 years old. It sounds crazy to me, bro. And you're actually 18 or 19. And if I, if I said, Sully, tell me what you want to do for the rest of your life right now and commit to a $40,000 uh, student loan that you can never get forgiven and you absolutely need to pay it off, um, you, there's no bankruptcy. You can, it's the only thing you can't put into a bankruptcy. So e even your credit cards could get forgiven in a bankruptcy, but student loans cannot. Th is that an insane, like like is that an insane place to be backed into as a, as an 18 and 19 year old yeah 100%. does it feel, feel like a, i mean i i don't know because i'm not 18 or 19 anymore and i dropped out of out of high school in ninth grade so but to me it seems and and again I, it seems predatory to me to to take an 18 or 19 year old person who's who going out to dinner is a big deal and say, sign on this dotted line and commit $40,000 in four years of your life to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life. I, it just, you know what I mean? Exactly. And there's nobody that's talking to our young kids about that. Cause everybody's saying, well, what college are you going to go to? What college are you going to go to? And it's almost like that's the only choice. And part of sort of my mission and, it's probably why I'm ranting about this right now is, is that we can make self education and we can make online communities like what we've built here at legendary available to people who are older, but also younger who may not want to commit to a massive student loan who may not have gotten a scholarship. Right. And, and who don't have wealthy family who can pay for them to go to college to let them know there is another path and it can be as or more lucrative than any job that you'll ever get. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's not even that big of a risk to like considering the price of the 15 day challenge. Like I heard this quote the other day where it was like the biggest risk that you could take is playing it safe. And that's yeah. true. Like, a lot of people live, live lives and, and, have jobs that they hate and that's the only way to get by and I don't want to be like that so even if I mean I'm not going to fail but even if even if I fail like I could still do the normal way of life I could still make yeah. it that way um right. you know go through college and whatnot the, the sure the cookie cutter way but um it's really even not that huge of a risk if you think about it yeah no no it's not it's 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 not and you know the cool thing is is that um, for those of you who might have got, you know, got offended by my college rant and think that think that I'm a college hater, I'm not. If you got if you went to college and you have a career in your degree field and if you gained lots of experience and knowledge from your college experience, more power to you. But I think we can all agree that kids coming out of high school where their brains fully haven't even developed. I don't even think my brain's fully developed yet, but it's, it's proof that male brains don't develop uh, until they're about 25. You know, women develop a little bit sooner. Their brains develop a little bit sooner than that. Uh, but males, and I think I'm a late bloomer. I think my, like I said, my brain's still developing here. 
to be forced into only one path is is insanity. It's predatory. It's total bullshit. Uh, and and I'm just glad that you are the type of dude at your age who's playing the field a little bit. And I know you love your girlfriend. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about exploring your options out here for your career path and you're developing some skills. And if you stick with it, and I know you won't fail if you put your mind to it, that by the time you're 21, within the next 24 months, dude, you're going to be sitting in a completely different environment. Going out to eat is going to become the norm for you. You may have even bought mom a car by then. And your girlfriend's going to be blown away because she's going to get to go to Louis Vuitton and Gucci and all this and buy all the nice stuff that she wants. And she can go to Ruth Chris and have a nice steak after she goes shopping, uh, you know, with her girlfriends. I'm still going to say no after that. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. Well, listen, brother, you know, uh, hey, live below your means. That's a great lesson. And it's another thing that a lot of our gurus on Instagram, right? Don't, don't, you know, it's always the Lambos and all this bullshit. But the truth is, is that living below your means and, and, uh, investing and saving money and investing money back into your business and making sure you have six months of bills in case anything happens or you get sick or whatever is a much sexier path than flexing with some Lamborghini that you can't afford you know, and eventually you're going to get repoed anyways. Right. So keep it up, brother. You're a wise young man. Tell your mom. I said, hello, tell your girlfriend, shout out to her. She sounds awesome and come back and keep us posted in a couple of months. Will you? Yes. hundred percent. Yes. All right, Sally. See you, buddy. Keep up the good work. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, buddy. Bye-bye. All right, my friends go and follow passive dot incomer on TikTok. That's Sully Wadsworth, cool young man. And of course, and again, shout out to Eric Fortner, uh, the dude who has been super supportive and helpful uh, to Sully. And shout out to everybody on the on the on the show this morning who's been commenting and and sending good energy in and supporting Sully here on the show. Uh, and go and follow him and comment and like his stuff. And lift him up, just like I say every single day. That's what that's what this community is all about, and that's one of the best ways that we can help each other. Um, if you're sitting on the sidelines for some reason and haven't taken the challenge yet, do that. You can hear and and see from guest after guest why that's a good decision. And if you can't afford it, and you want to be a part of our more exclusive learning community in our business blueprints, then uh, Take our blueprints. I know you won't regret that. Uh, it'll be one of the best investments you ever make. And uh, we will see you guys back here tomorrow for another episode. Be legendary. Get out of here. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. Peace.